Craig Cameron, Gloves Red, delighted to be joined by Natasha Jonas. Natasha, how are you? Okay? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Good, good. And uh, I'm go I was going to start, actually. I was very jealous of a picture I've seen. Uh, you managed to meet the newly crowned US Open champion, Emma Raducanu. How, how was that? It was good. Um, yeah, we just ran into each other through circumstance. And um, I see you straight away. I had a bit of a fangirl moment. And I was like... I'm like, can I get a picture? And we, I'm like, we've got a selfie. And then I was like, can I get another one? <laughs> like, I'll wrap up one. And she went, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, she was sand. She was absolutely lovely. Um, and so was the, the man show for around as well, to be fair. He was sand as well. Yeah, yeah. What, what, does it, what does it feel like being on the other side of it? Because probably people are asking you for selfies. So what's it like being on the other side asking someone for a selfie? Yeah, boxing's quite a niche sport, so it's only really the people that know about boxing that will ask you, or like if I'm in Liverpool, like people in, in Liverpool sometimes will recognise who you are, but because you're in the local papers and stuff. But apart from that, I don't, I don't really get it that often, which I'm I like, I'm happy about because I, I do get embarrassed when people ask. Yeah. Um, well, listen, Natasha, I was going to, going to touch on a few subjects, the same as every interview, but I just wanted to like touch on how, how did you actually get into boxing? Um, it was just an accident. Uh, I finished playing football. I got injured and decided when I came home, I'd put on a lot of weight and, you know, I was out of doing any kind of physical activity uh, for a whole year. Now, anyone that knows me knows I've, I've always been active since, like, since, since I could walk. Um, and I, I said to my uncle, right, can I just use your key? He's got a karate gym. And you know, it's got a like a running machine, a free free weight, and you could, like get myself half fit again. And he was like, yeah, yeah. And then there was a woman that lived over the road that used to watch the gym for him because he didn't live in that area, and she was the the female coach for the Rotunda ABC. And she was like, stop training by yourself and come along to these sessions. And I was like, mm, fuck, I don't really fancy it. But I didn't tell her that. But she just bugged me and bugged me and was so persistent that in the end I said, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go, and um, I went, and that was about 17 years ago now. So, yeah, yeah. best mistake ever. Yeah, how how was it received by the family when you said you're coming back and giving boxing a go? Well, my mum has said that um, she um, she'd have been more surprised if it were to come to her and said, "Oh, mum, I want to be a dancer or I want to be a gymnast." You know, I don't like I've, I said I played footy before that, so boxing wasn't like anything. I'd done a bit of like, you know, we've all, all the whole family's done karate and I'd done a bit of boxing growing up, like Thai boxing and stuff. So she wasn't surprised at all, if I'm honest. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like, uh, and that progressed to quite rightly being called kind of Miss GB. And I know I'm fast forwarding quite a bit, Natasha, but how, like, what did it mean to you to represent GB at boxing after, as you quite rightly said, they're like the best accident you've ever made? It was, it's surreal really, especially like the, like going to the Olympics and stuff. Like my mum told me a story of when I was four, watching the 88 games in Seoul, saying, mum, I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there, talking about the Olympics, watching it on the telly as a kid. And it took me like 24 years and about 105 different sports. Um, and I actually got there. So when I qualified in China and I came home and like obviously all my family had like sort of through a big like, welcome home party um, because I'd qualified like, to share that moment with my mum and for her to tell me that story and she was like, obviously very proud that you know it's you know, it took all in times I had millions of downs and I kept on was persistent I always believed in myself I never give up and I got what I'd said I was going to do when I was four yeah oh great great and progress, progressing again Natasha to like becoming a mum um, and how like maybe from a guy's perspective, like how hard is it like in terms of the demand on the body, like having a pregnancy and then getting back to being as fit as the demand of boxing puts on you? Like how, how challenging is that? Very. <laughs> and to be honest, I never intended to come back. <clears throat> when I said retired from amateur and said bye to, I thought I was saying bye to boxing forever. 
I didn't have no intention. There wasn't really a women's boxing pro scene here. Obviously, you know, the likes of Jane Couch and Kathy Brown and stuff, but, you know, it wasn't something that I thought could, like, be be a job. You know what I mean? I thought, like, that was, that's why leaving the amateurs was such a hard decision because I knew I was walking away from the sport. Well, I thought I was walking away from the sport forever. Um, but then, you know, I think as a mum, you're especially a first time mum that you're so fully focused on trying to be a perfect mum that nothing else really matters like I don't think I brush my hair or my teeth for about four months <laughs> um, and you're just trying to do take on everyone's advice and you, you're so attentive and you're trying to love this human but not too much and not spoil it and put it down and but then you're just in awe and you look at it all the time so it's so hard being a new mum with all the new information and trying to be perfect when really and truly, like now, I realise that you you will always just find your way and I'll say that to, to any mum. You know, it's just take on all the advice you want and listen, but you, you'll you find your way that works for you and that was hard. And I remember um, when the opportunity came for me to go pro, um, going to Joe's for the first week and like he was saying, right, you're, 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 you're what what weight was you? I'm gonna say yeah yeah. We'll we'll make. I was like yeah lightweight. You know I'd even be happy with well ten. He was like yeah we're gonna make you super feather. And I was like he has lost the plot if he thinks I'm gonna make super feather. And then lo and behold, I obviously did. Um, but that was that was a struggle. And how people like Alison Felix and other mums, you know. God, I'm trying to think of someone. Serena Williams have done it within months. Um. I'll never know. You know, Charlie D- Davidson on GB has got three kids. She's my new superhero. Anyone that's got more than one, you are you are a, a great woman to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because it's yeah. tough, but it's hard. And you know, as a as a as a as a single female, like you you you're you, the mum's like kind of the, the nurturing one. Um and I, I was struggling at first, like because I was like, right, I'm I'm spending all this time training and I'm not really what I thought to and what I needed to do with the baby and and that was a, a struggle mentally battle with myself and then when I was speaking to some of my friends who are obviously working mums themselves they were like yeah we feel the same and I was like wow I'm I'm no different to any other working mum it's just my job's a little bit different so I think everybody struggles with that and you know when you leave the baby and you go back to work and you know trying to find a happy home life school now balance because you know you want to make the time that you have got with them quality, but then you have a lockdown and then you've got 24 hours with your kid and you're like, oh my God, how do I entertain this child for 24 hours? <laughs> but, you know, it, it's 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 been great for me, I think. I think, you know, I was saying the other day in a different interview, the, when when I was a, an athlete on GB, I was so focused and I'm still focused on results. Um, but I was so, it's like you're everything. It's, you're so driven and, like I, I'd lose and it, it wrecked me whole month until the next time I got to a tournament. Um, but now I, I have to detach from that athlete and when, when it's out of the gym and be 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 mum, which is what she needs. And like you there's so many things that when you're an athlete, you know, you're selfish, you know, everything revolves around you, you you know. And when you're a mum, that, that doesn't work. So you have to, but I f- for me, I feel that that's like a good thing because I can when I come home I'm out of boxer mode and I'm mum that's all I have to be when I'm home and I think that's helped me mentally wise because I can like differentiate now between the gym and being at home which I couldn't do before yeah just massive respect like I see you know from speaking to different boxers the demand uh, the training takes and preparation and camp and then yeah I didn't be a mum to that I just yeah I find that amazing how you balance that and others balance it as well. So um, you know what's mad is that yeah. nobody says, "Ah, oh, so you you know you're a dad. How how's it? How do you balance? You know, work with being a dad. Not many people will say that, but being a mum, everyone everyone asks that. So it's mad that like that like like I was saying, it is kind of seen as the woman's thing to do is to look after the kids and yeah. and or to look after the the, the kid. Um, but no one really. I, most of the lads I know in boxing are dads, but nobody asked them that question. So Yeah, no, listen, you're totally right. It's just an assumption, isn't it, that people make that 
the women's do most of it. And I know you touched on there, like your first week with, with Joe Gallagher, of course. Like, what what was that? Ex- like, so first of all, how did that come about, and what was the experience like of walking in that in that gym for the first time? Because you know, Joe was voted kind of trainer of the year before a lot of great champions in there, and walking in there as a female, like, what what was that like? Was that intimidating for you? No, not really. I, I, I've always known Joe since the amateur days anyway, for him, obviously, because he trained the Smiths. I've, I've literally followed the Smiths wherever they've gone. You know, they was at the Rotunda, I was at the Rotunda. They went to Joe. They went to GB, I went to GB. They went to Joe's, I went to Joe's. So, uh, like, I'm, I'm like the little sister they never wanted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the big sister, I should say, because I'm older than a lot of them. But, um, yeah, it was just, it was just, you know, <clears throat> When I when I went to the, that gym, obviously it's a professional gym. It's different. It was, you know, you have to find your your place, kind of thing in 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 a positive way. Um, but I wasn't there wasn't people I didn't know. I think probably Callum Johnson was the only one I didn't didn't know at the time because, you know, Crawler. You know, yeah. everybody knows Crawler. And everybody like Crawler. Amateurs, pros. There's not a person in boxing that doesn't like Crawler. Um, the Smiths, like I say, are always. I've always been around them, so that was no different. Jose Burton, we, me and Jose were sponsored as amateurs by the same company. So when we'd have like, then when they'd have functions or events, we we both turn up, and obviously, and I, I knew him from that. Um, so yeah, there wasn't there wasn't anybody else that I, I didn't really know. Um, but it, it it's always, you know, that first week when you when you went there, you, you you're trying to impress. Sorry, Marcus as well. I didn't I didn't know Marcus. Um, but you go there that first week, um, and you're trying to impress, and you you know, going above and beyond, trying to like n- not be. You don't want to be, you know. Oh, she can't do that because she's a girl, or you know, this is oh, she can't do this, or you know. But Marcus hates me, not hates me, but you know, he, he kind of blagged his way through the swimming, um, saying, "Oh, you know, Joe, black people don't swim and all that." And then I came and I was swimming, and Joe was like, "Well, why can't Tasha?" <laughs> so Marcus had to start swimming. <laughs> Wow. Um, so that was, that was that was quite funny, but uh, yeah, it's just it's just one of them. Like like anything, you know, you go to you go to Rotunda. It was you know quite daunting walking through the door because it's a prestigious amateur gym. But then you eventually, you know, you become one of the lads and you find your place in the gym. Same as GB, you know, you walk through there. You know, it's Olympians all over the wall, and hey, this could this next one could be you. And you know, everyone's training there towards the same goal. And then you find your place, and then the same again with Joe's. And now I'm, I'm, I'm just like, like I was in the Rotunda. I'm like part of the furniture. Yeah, yeah. And it's, I suppose there was some friendly faces in there for you. It probably helped you kind of settle within that that gym as well. And um, I don't like touching on negative stuff, but you know, touching on the, the kind of the, the first pro defeat to Obanoff, like, what what did it take from you, Natasha, to like come back from that? Was it like a mental, a really kind of mental battle for you to come back from that yeah it was tough i've never experienced like a loss in that manner obviously like i said before in gb you lose and you're, you're in a tournament with gb every other month or every month you know you're competing against people to try and be the one person selected to go to the tournament so like you'd be mad until the next tournament and then you could redeem yourself but in the pro boxing like it could be months before you do that yeah. um and not only that like i said i've never being beaten that manner before and that was tough for my ego to take um, and I had to go away and then you know I got a sniff that I was going to be um, like rebuild myself and then I got a sniff that I was going to fight Harper and then it was off and I was like right lockdowns happened and I didn't know whether I was going to get that opportunity again and I thought right I'm not going to go away from this lockdown without gaining something new and something positive. I'm going to find out either find out something new about myself, learn something new about myself or, you know, develop myself in some way. And I went, I went away and did that. And me and Joe throughout the whole lockdown was communicating like, have you read this book? Have you seen this series? Like do this, read that, listen to this podcast. And we've done that. And then, you know, the Harper, Harper fight was the, 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 the stars are getting that ball rolling and like I, I do believe that I change myself mentally more than physically physically you can do whatever you you want but you have your, your body and your mind has to be with it 
Yeah, and and for me, for me, Natasha, and I'm, like for me, you won that fight. Um, from watching that, um, like in your mind, looking back, and I don't know how many times you maybe watched that fight back before touching on the Katie Taylor fight, but for you, like, how did you see? How should that fight have went in terms of the result? I mean, I I, I do think I was a little hard done to not getting the decision. Um, when I watched it and scored it myself, I probably thought I was two rounds up, um, maybe even three, I think two. Um, so, yeah, I, again, like, I could only take the positives because that pro- fight probably, you know, raised my profile a lot more and then ended up getting me the Taylor fight in the end. But it wasn't obviously the result that I wanted and, you know, everything was like, oh, yeah, we'll get a rematch, we'll get it on and just never, never seemed to, you know, we could never agree, I suppose, and it just fizzled out. Um, but, yeah, for me, it was kind of a, I, I told you so, because, like, I thought some of the comments on social media that I was getting before the fight and some of the, you know, experts' opinions, I was like, wow, they actually, they're, they're all basing me off this open off, which was just a bad night in the office, and there's no other excuse for it. Um, but they're all they're all saying I'm too old and you know too heavy and haven't got it in me. I haven't got ten, can't do ten rounds. I'm not fit enough. I'm not sharp enough. And, and I was like, wow, I'm gonna prove all these people wrong, and that, that gave me the motivation to do that. So yeah, great. And I think like certainly your profile was raised massively since the, the last two fights. For me, you beat Terry Harper. The Katie Taylor was the fight was very close. Um, how like how close have the rematches been in terms of discussions in the background, Natasha? Um, I've definitely got you know it's 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 still we can, it's it's still negotiable, so we can still talk about it. But I've definitely got more chance of a rematch with Katie than I ever have with Harper, I believe. Um, and 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 that's no disrespect to Harper because I genuinely do believe Harper herself would would, would like the rematch. I just think her team around are dumped. And that's that's fine, but I've, I've said from you know the the second that it fell through the first time, I'm not going to be basing my career waiting on Terry Harper, and I haven't done. That's why I moved on to Katie. That's why I'll move on to maybe a different weight division. That whatever I need to do to get my own world title, because I'm not waiting around for nobody. If I'm honest. Yeah, and that so you mentioned the world title there. Is that just like you know the one objective in your head before I hang the clubs up? I'm going to be a world champion. Yeah, I think. It, I deserve it to not only Joe, my family, and I deserve, I deserve it for myself for peace. That's what the reason, the whole reason I came back into the professional game is to something about my amateur career that I wasn't fully satisfied with. And I thought, right, if I, when, when I get this world title, that'll draw in the line and sand for me and I'll be happy with that. Um, and it hasn't happened yet. So I'm still motivated because it hasn't happened. And that once I want to get it, then I'll probably, if I would have won either Harper or Taylor, maybe I would have reconsidered what I was going to do next. But, you know, it hasn't happened. So, you know, yeah. back to the drawing board we go, as always. Yeah. Um, I'll be honest, if I was part of Terry Harper's team or Katie Taylor's, I wouldn't be taking rematch. Um, but we'll see, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, so, listen, I, I was delighted to see you on... Sky Sports as a pundit recently. I thought you were excellent. Um, so I just wanted to pick your brain quickly. Um, you've maybe given away your predictions with uh, being very close to the Smith family. Big fight for Liverpool. And are you potentially going to be on that card? Liam Smith? Yeah, I'm on the card. It was, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was like a little bit of a where's Wally because like, I'm about 20 people behind. There's a whole crowd of people. But yeah, I'm on the card now. Um, it was always talks of me being on there. We're just trying to finalise some some finer details, as always, in boxing when it comes to the business side of the sport. But yeah, um, it's a great card, to be honest. It's stacked. You know, talent from top to bottom, you know, people starting off their careers and experienced people, you know, trying to progress and move forward in there. So um yeah, it's a big night for Liverpool. And, you know, there's three women on it as well. There's myself, Rhiannon Dixon and Shannon Courtney. So it's a big night for, for women's boxing as well. You know, we're going to be at the forefront. And, you know, we always want to put on a show for the people that are watching. And, you know, the supporters, we want to gain more support and keep the movement going. And the so the headline of that card, Liam Smith, Anthony Fowler, like, 
Could you break that down? To, how, how do you see that fight going? I think it's a brilliant fight. And, you know, people in Liverpool, you have to pick a side. There's going to be no one on the fence. You're either going to be with Fowler or with Smith. Um, and I think from the people that I've spoke to, probably the majority kind of agree with me that Liam's just a bit too experienced being in with the better people. Um, and has been on them big stages on them, had them big nights and potentially is a little bit, I don't want to say too clever, but yeah, a bit more experienced than Farla. Um, so I can see Liam winning and, and potentially stopping him in the late, in the later round. Um, that being said, I think Farla's going to have a great start and I don't think it's going to, I think he's improved a lot under Shane McGuigan and um, I do, it, it's it's where it's Liam riding out the storm for the first couple of rounds, and then I think he'll take over. But I think Fowler will have a great start, and it's going to be very nervy start. Yeah, it's a great fight. And Natasha, I just wanted to pick your brain, being being from Liverpool. Like, who's the next star to come out of Liverpool from a boxing perspective in your mind? The next, I think, there's a lot of um, expectation over Peter McGrail. You know, his style is so slick and so um, fancy. We didn't really get to see much of it um, during the Olympics. But, you know, when he was on a roll before the the, the, the qualifier, he was flying. You know, he'd won his, I think, a, a silver in the in the Europeans. Um, and once he gets into into a rhythm, he, he's going to be, He's going to be very entertaining, but he's going to be um, hard to stop once he's in his flow and once he's learned the pro game, because it is it is a little bit different. Um, so I think when it comes to the next star, that's the one everyone's got their eye on, looking and seeing seeing where he goes. Okay. Um, and just the, just the last couple of things. So naturally, I remember I can't even remember what program it was. Maybe it was Sky Sports News or it was something else. I remember years ago because I've always loved my box and watched that program. And I'm pretty sure you were on it with like Andy Joshua and it was the rest of the GB team. Are they right in saying that? Yeah, um, copy. Yeah, and and so like in terms of Andy Joshua's fighting Usyk on Saturday night, like again, kind of breaking that down, how how do you see that going? Because it's such a competitive fight for me. It's, do you know what? It's a harder fight than, than people are making out. And it's, for Josh, at like, he could have picked an easier fight and got a lot, I wouldn't say a lot more credit, but, you know, people would have respected it a bit more. People just think you sick some, you know, chumped up cruiser, come up and he, he's not. He, you know, one, he's undisputed that way. He's had a great amateur career. He's, like, behind Lemachenko for, like, a stylistic nightmare. You know, um, and Joshua wins. It's gonna be like, oh, yeah. Well, he was he was big, and you know he, he should have. And if Joshua loses, he's gonna be like, how's he getting beat by him? So it's a it's a it's not. I don't think it's a win. I think it's a lose lose for Joshua because people aren't gonna give him the credit for beating him anyway. Um, but it is really really a tough fight, and I see it probably being the same as Smith and Fowler, where you know you're gonna to have to. Wait for him to, I won't say slow down because I don't think you six going to slow down, but Joshua's going to have to work a way to get to, to pin him somewhere to unload them shots. And I think just the, the sheer, you know, weight and, and, and thing, be a power behind the shots. We all know how, how good his, you know, his lead up is. And, and his, but, you know, when he, he's got to get them off in, in, in bunches because he's going to have to. It's going to spend a lot of time chasing them and then pinning them, and then you've got to let them all go. Um, but you, you know, you you six slick operator, and he's not he's not you know he wasn't born yesterday. He's a slick. He, he's very very experienced, very knowledgeable, and very very good with his feet. Um, has he got the power to hit Joshua? Is probably the question. But you know, speed and time and kills. Yeah, I think the the interesting thing for me, Natasha, was. Uh, Tony Bell, you talking about how mentally draining it was because of your six um, footwork is so good that just that pressure's on all the time that I'm actually thrown and he feels as if he needs to throw. Um, so it's just yeah. such a great fight, I think, to, to be in the UK as well. But I, I think maybe the kind of boxing purists um, understand how good Yusik is, but 
maybe your kind of casuals haven't got a respect for what you six achieved, you know, amateur and pro, and it's maybe just a, a lose-lose for AJ, no matter what way it goes, you know? Yeah, and, and, and what you're saying is so totally right. It's like, that way you're, when you're, when you're, you've got someone thinking about what you're going to do, that becomes training. When you're thinking about what your opponent's going to do, instead of actually just doing what you want to do, like if you, you second question yourself and then that's boxing's all about like timing and a split head, second hesitation you can see it you like as a boxer you can see it i can you know you when you have you especially like for, for myself you know self poor versus up, like, if, if someone hesitates i can see it and you, you when you go you just gotta go and i think that's that that's what it is with them too you know you've, you've just gotta go and let your hands go and trust that it's it's gonna work um, but it is so mentally draining and to do that for 12 three minute rounds is tough the only bonus for Joshua is that I think he's shown the skills that he's needed to we, like I say before we all know that he's explosive we all know that he's got fast hands we, we all know that he can punch but in his last two well since the Ruiz number two he's shown things that we did we didn't see him we didn't see him before. He's shown patience. He's shown that he can stick to the plan. And I think these are the type of things, not only does he need for you, sir, but he'll need if, if, if the Fury fight ever happens. Yeah. So in your mind, like, you know, if you had to pick, you know, how the fight's going to go, knockout points, like what, what would you choose, do you reckon? I think a, a knockout again for Joshua Lee. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, Natasha, I've got no doubt you're going to become a, a world champion before you hang the gloves up. But once you do hang the gloves up, like what's next? I just feel that you've got so much experience and personality and knowledge to add to boxing. Have you have you got any plans after that to still contribute to boxing in any way? I think boxing's been such a big part of my life for so long that you could never fully walk away from it. And I think probably that's why some people do when they try and walk away from it because. There's, there's nothing that can fill the void. So, you know, I've got a charity being set up. I've got um, a part of a par- parliamentary boxing group. Um, I do bits and stuff with, with uh, GB Boxing because they always keep me in the loop with what, what they're doing and how things are going. Um, I've, I've coached, even when I retired from amateur boxing and went back to the Rotunda and done a bit of coaching. Um, and I've been doing some punditry, which I, I really enjoy. So fingers crossed, I, I'll get a um, get a get get some work out of that as well. Because you know you're sitting there talking about what you know, and you get the best seats in the house on on the big fight night. So what's 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 the not like? Yeah, that's why I that's why I do media just so I can get good seats near the front. Um, <laughs> but uh, I was just like just lastly because I think it's really important in terms of the the great work you've been doing with like a charity in Liverpool. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's against like kind of knife knife crime um, and against that. Like, what what have you been doing? What like what part have you been playing in, in that charity? And has there been any kind of progression in terms of the work that you've been doing? Yeah, I'm um, in the process of setting setting my own up, but you know I have been working with anti knife campaigns for for a very long time, um, and and I do a lot of work in in schools. You know, going for talks and working with some of the kids that are in education, not in education. And, and yeah, youth community groups, uh, wherever, whoever wants to listen, I'll talk. Best subjects myself, believe it or not. So, yeah, um, I, yeah, I try and be as involved in the community as I, as I can, because it's, obviously it's really important to me. You know, it's, I think it's important that you have some positive impact on, on the people and, and the surrounding areas of, of where you're from. Yeah, no, great. No, listen, Natasha, I just want to thank you for your time. I've really enjoyed the interview, and um, I've got no doubt you're going to become a world champion. Um, but yeah, if I was in, if I was in uh, Katie Taylor's team um, or Terry Harper, I probably wouldn't be taking the rematch. So, no offense, but. Um, I'm sure you'll get don't it. Don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna work on it. We're gonna work on it. Yeah, my girlfriend's a massive uh, Katie Taylor fan. I remember watching the, the fight that night and I was like, yeah, she's in bother. Just felt you were really strong that night. You landed some big shots as well. So, yeah, it's probably the reason why I wouldn't be in a rush to take the rematch, but I'd love to see it. 
you know, like I, I'm not complaining about the results. It is what it is. I'm not even complaining about it. Wouldn't we change it? But you know what annoys me sometimes in boxing, like week after week, not not for my fights, just in general. Week after week, we're talking about judges' decisions and you know judging, and there's no. It's it is what you like and what you see, and, and it is hard to judge because I've I've done it myself and. What you see from a certain angle on your table and what you see from you know the other side of the table is two different things. So it, it is a tough job and I wouldn't like I wouldn't like to do it. But then there has to be some transparency or some like ground rate, that kind of thing. Because okay, I box Terry Harper and I probably land the bigger, cleaner, better shot. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, but the Terry, you know, she she worked, she worked and she had the engine and she, you know, she she threw a lot. And um, put you under pressure. I was like, okay, so that's how she won round. So then, Katie Taylor boxes pursuit, and Katie Taylor throws the bigger, harder, stronger shot. Yeah. But pursuit is the one that puts the pressure on, and um, you know, isn't isn't working nonstop. But Katie wins. So like, and then I fight Katie, and then I land the cleaner, better shot, and Katie does the pressure thing, and then Katie wins. So I just. I'm just like, what What do you want? I don't know what you want. Yeah, but I don't think anyone can argue with your assessment of that. I think it's spot on. Just one thing, I'd, like I was going to finish the interview there, but I'm just, I'm curious. <laughs> about, like, in terms just of... Uh, it wasn't long oh, enough, so... <laughs> yeah, it's just, I felt like seeing fight week with Katie Taylor, I felt like, like a lot of our opponents are really respectful, like kind of nicey-nicey. But I felt you had like a quiet confidence and so did she. But it seemed as if, was there a wee bit of an atmosphere or was it just like two people that believed they were going to win the fight? Like it was... No, I think, you know, we are like, we've known each other for such... In the bubble, I'm, I'm you know, playing table tennis with a mum. I'm playing snooker with Brian. So like, it, it is what it is. We've known each other a very long time. I'm very respectful of, you know, everything. She's very respectful of me. Um, there is no animosity at all, as you're seeing at the start, the end, Jordan. It, it is what it is. It's just a fight, and one of us has got to win. Um, but yeah, I, I was confident. I was obviously on a high from the Harper performance, uh, I, and I knew I had to be Harper and better. And I knew I was confident that everything I did in, in my camp was enough to beat her. So I was confident in that, and I knew what people were saying, but they'd said that before to me, <laughs> so it didn't really matter. I I, I I I knew what I'd done, and I was confident in what I'd done. Obviously, uh, on the night, it didn't work out, but um, if we had if we had to fight again, it'd be the same again. It'd be probably, probably both be the same, because she she believe I've won before, I can win again. And I, I believe I was just out, probably a little bit of inexperience got, got you through it, but I can be better, and I know I can. Yeah, no, I'd love, I'd love to see the rematch. To be honest, um, so I hope it happens. But and especially with the punditry stuff, I think you were a breath of fresh air. To be honest, I thought you were great. So hopefully that continues as well. Um, but no, what's the wedding for Sky for me? <laughs> what's that? Put a good word in for Sky for me. I will. I will do. You do the same for me. Um, so, <laughs> but no, listen, it's been a pleasure. Thanks again for your time. And, uh, and I'll talk to you soon, Natasha. Thanks very much. Oh, nice one. Thank you. Thanks a lot right. for having me on. Take care. Bye-bye.